What's going on guys, it's Simo. So if you wanna play a deck that is super consistent, able to recur its own in-theme cards like Infernity Barrier, and plays a lot like a deck like Zodiac, well, let me introduce you to Salamangrate. Salamangrate is an archetype comprised of fire cybers type monsters. The strength of this deck lies in its consistency and ability to generate lots of advantage with very few resources. What's also amazing about this archetype is that most of what you need can be acquired from the Soul Burner Structure deck, making this an excellent option for players looking to play competitively, but also on a budget. Let's begin with the main monster lineup, starting with Salamangrate Gazelle. If Salamangrate Gazelle is normal or special summoned, you can send one Salamangrate card from your deck to the graveyard, except itself. Since Salamangrates have multiple ways to recur their resources, Gazelle is a card you're always going to want to have access to, as it makes for an excellent starter card. Additionally, if a Salamangrate monster is sent to the graveyard, except another copy of Gazelle, you can special summon Gazelle from your hand. If we can trigger it, this effect is incredible because it allows us to trigger Gazelle's other effect without needing to commit to our normal summon. Keep in mind that you can use both of these effects in the same turn, allowing us to push for maximum value. Complementing Gazelle is another important monster, Salamangrate Spinny. If you control another Salamangrate monster while Spinny is in the graveyard, you can special summon Spinny, but it gets banished if it leaves the field. A basic Salamangrate play is to summon Gazelle, send Spinny, then resurrect Spinny, giving you access to several different extra deck plays, such as an in archetype rank 3 or even a link 2. In addition to that, if you control a Salamangrate card, you can discard Spinny and have it targeted monster gain 500 attack until the end of the turn. Similar to Gazelle, you can use this effect of Spinny to help facilitate its secondary effect, since you can use both effects in the same turn. Another important Salamangrate is Salamangrate Foxy. When normal summoned, Salamangrate Foxy has an effect similar to Sky Striker Aerospace Area Zero, where you can excavate the top three cards of your deck and add one Salamangrate card from among them into your hand. Not only does this add consistency, but it helps generate easy card advantage. Furthermore, if Foxy is in the graveyard and there's a face-up spell or trap card on the field, Field, you can discard a Salamangrate card to special summon Foxy from the graveyard. Then you can also destroy one face-up spell or trap card. Unfortunately, you can only use one of the two effects of Foxy in a given turn, but this card offers too much upside not to play. A few other Salamangrate monsters to consider are Salamangrate Falco and Salamangrate Jack Jaguar. Salamangrate Falco can once per turn either set one of our Salamangrate spell or trap cards that are in our graveyard if Falco itself gets sent to the graveyard, or, if Falco is in the graveyard, return one of our Salamangrate monsters to our hand to special summon itself to the field. Jack Jaguar, on the other hand, can once per turn special summon itself from the graveyard to a zone a Salamangrate Link monster points to by shuffling one targeted Salamangrate monster from the graveyard back into the deck. Both Falco and Jack Jaguar have valuable effects, but it can be a bit situational. However, thanks to cards like Gazelle and other consistency boosters, we don't need to max out on either of these. Also, being level 4 gives us access to some rank 4 plays such as Baguska or Abyss Dweller. Speaking of consistency boosters, one monster that isn't a Salamangrate card that might as well be is Lady Debug. If Lady Debug is normal or special summoned, you can add one level 3 or lower Cybers monster from deck to hand. Not only does this allow us to search for a majority of the Salamangrate archetype, but Lady Debug itself is a Cybers monster, synergizing with one of the most important monsters in the extra deck, Salamangrate Bailinx, who requires one level 4 or lower Cybers monster to be Link summoned. A lot of people compare Salamangrate to Zodiac since they both generate lots of advantage with very little resources. With that in mind, Salamangrate has a lot of room to incorporate a high number of hand traps such as Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Effect Veiler, and the newly released Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Obviously this completely depends on the metagame at any given point in time, so don't overlook possibilities like Droll and Lockbird, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, or Infinite Impermanence as well. Moving on to the extra deck, Salamangrate actually uses quite a wide variety of different extra deck monsters. Starting off with the Link monsters, Salamangrate Bailinx is a Link 1 that only requires one level 4 or lower Cybers monster to be Link summoned. Considering that this is basically the entire archetype in addition to Lady Debug, Bailinx can be made with ease. If Bailinx is Link summoned, you can add one Salamangrate Sanctuary, the deck's field spell, from deck to hand. And while Bailinx is in the graveyard once per turn, if a Salamangrate card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can 
can banish Bailinx from the graveyard instead. Not only is Bailinx crucial for getting to the deck's important field spell, but having a protection effect in Grave similar to that of Return of the Dragon Lords is invaluable. Next up is the Link to Salamangrate, Salamangrate Sunlight Wolf. Requiring any two fire effect monsters to be Link summoned, if a monster is normal or special summoned to a zone Sunlight Wolf points to, we can add one fire monster from graveyard to hand. But we can't summon monsters with the added monster's name for the rest of the turn. Not only is the entire archetype comprised of fire monsters, but this also means we can recycle cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring since it happens to be fire, turning one copy into theoretically infinite. Additionally, during the main phase, if we control Sunlight Wolf that was Link summoned using another copy of Sunlight Wolf as material, we can add one Salamangrate spell or trap card from the graveyard to hand. Both of these effects can be used once per turn, and both effects are insane advantage generating machines, allowing us to recycle some of the best cards in our deck every single turn. Then there's Salamangrate Heat Leo. Requiring two or more fire effect monsters, if Heat Leo is Link Summoned, we can target one card in our opponent's spell and trap zone and shuffle it back into the deck. Then, once per turn, if Heat Leo was Link Summoned using another copy of Heat Leo as material, we can target one face-up monster on the field and one monster in our graveyard, then make the attack of the face-up monster equal to that of the monster in our graveyard until the end of the turn. This second effect may seem a little bit niche, but it's actually very relevant when we discuss the deck's fusion monster and pseudo win condition, Salamangrate Violet Chimera. Salamangrate Violet Chimera is a fusion monster requiring one Salamangrate monster and one Link monster. If it's fusion summoned, we can make it gain attack equal to half the combined original attack of the materials used to summon it until the end of the turn. But if that weren't enough, once per battle during damage calculation, if Violet Chimera battles a monster whose current attack is different from its original, as a quick effect, we can double Violet Chimera's attack during damage calculation only. And lastly, if Violet Chimera was fusion summoned using another copy of Violet Chimera as material, the attack of any monster Violet Chimera battles becomes zero during damage calculation only. Needless to say, in tandem with a card like Salamangrate Heat Leo and its ability to modify attack values, Violet Chimera can close out a game with one single attack rather quickly. Lastly for the extra deck is the Salamangrate Xyz monster, Salamangrate Mirage Stallio. Requiring any two level 3 monsters, Mirage Stallio is basically an in-archetype themed MX Saber invoker, allowing us to once per turn detach a material and special summon one Salamangrate monster from our deck in defense position. We may not be able to activate monster effects except fire monsters for the rest of the turn, but seeing as the whole deck is comprised of entirely fire monsters, this is seldom an issue. Furthermore, if an Xyz summon Mirage Stallio is sent to the graveyard for a Link summon of a Salamangrate monster, we can target one monster on the field and return it to the hand. This Compulse-like effect can be useful for clearing monsters with built-in protection effects such as Thunder Dragon Colossus, or just helping clear the way for an OTK. Moving on to the spell lineup, Salamangrate Circle is an insane quick play rota for the archetype, allowing us to add any Salamangrate monster from deck to hand. It also has a secondary effect that can target a Salamangrate Link monster that was Link summoned using a monster with the same name, and make it unaffected by other monsters' effects for the duration of the turn. Most of the time we're going to be using Circle to search, but the added flexibility is always welcome. Not to mention we can recur this card with monsters like Falco and Sunlight Wolf. Salamangrate Sanctuary is the deck's field spell, and a key component to the deck's strategy. Notice how a lot of Salamangrate Link monsters have additional effects if they were Link summoned using a monster with the same name. With Sanctuary on the field, once per turn, if we Link Summon a Salamangrate monster, we can use one Salamangrate Link monster we control with the same name as the entire material. This means we can Link Sunlight Wolf into Sunlight Wolf, or Heat Leo into Heat Leo for absolutely free. Sanctuary also has a second ability where if one of our monsters battles, we can pay 1,000 life points and target one Link monster we control, make its attack zero, and if we do, gain life points equal to its original attack. While situational, this could help bolster your life total if time might soon be called in the round at any competitive event. Will of the Salamangrate is a continuous spell that allows us to once per turn special summon one Salamangrate monster from our hand or graveyard during our main phase. Alternatively, however, 
We can send Will of the Salamangrate from the field to the graveyard and target one Salamangrate Link monster we control that was Link summoned using a monster with the same name and special summon monsters from the hand or graveyard in defense position up to the number of that Link monster's Link rating. What's crazy here is that there are no other restrictions on this card. So in tandem with something like Heat Leo, we're using one card to special summon three monsters to the field, most likely from the graveyard, generating absurd amounts of advantage. Fusion of Fire is always treated as a Salamangrid card and is the preferred method for accessing Violet Chimera by allowing us to fusion summon using monsters from our hand and or either field as fusion material. Paying homage to something like Super Polymerization, this card can be an absolute blowout, especially in mirror matches. Lastly, Salamangrid has access to two very powerful traps at their disposal, Salamangrid Rage and Salamangrid Roar. Salamangrid Rage is an in-archetype Icarus attack of sorts where we can either send one Salamangrate monster from our hand or field to the graveyard to target and destroy an opponent's card, or target one Salamangrate Link monster that was Link summoned using a monster with the same name and destroy cards our opponent controls up to that Link monster's Link rating. This means in combination with something like Heat Leo, we can destroy up to three cards with just one. On the other hand, when a spell trap card or monster effect is activated while we control a Salamangrate Link monster, Salamangrate Roar allows us to negate the activation, and if we do, destroy that card. Acting as the deck's in archetype Infernity Barrier, Salamangrate Roar has another ability where it can be set from the graveyard to the field if a Salamangrate monster is Link summoned, but it gets banished when it leaves the field. You may only be able to use one of these effects per turn, but having a card this powerful be able to be used multiple times with a single copy is nothing but pure value. I really hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to Salamangrate. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content, and if you really found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member, because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.